Well, September 5th out here, Friday, pushing noon. And uh, yeah, I'm back out here today. And uh, not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm still in the same position as I was with this guy. Still on jack stands and uh, working on brake stuff. And it's uh, probably what I'll do. I got to take uh, uh, the front bearing assemblies apart, lube them up, see what's going on. This one here's got a clicky click, and I'm not sure if it's the speedometer cable or something in the bearings. So, got to take that apart, see what's going on in there. But uh, that and, uh, you know, master cylinder, um, there are various kinds. Some of them have the little reservoir that sit on top. This one that I've got on hand uh, isn't that way. It takes the uh, hoses. So, I'll probably put a reservoir somewhere else and run hoses down. And uh, it'll be fine. Well, I got a question about how I spliced these cables because um, I had to shorten them about six inches. Anyway, I just cut them. And then under here, in this airborne spot, up above the shift linkage here, I just used a couple of those guys. Um, you know, laid the cables side by side. There's, you know, one on each side. And then uh, put two clampies there. And um, those will work out fine. I'm going to grease the heck out of them and they won't, uh, you know, they won't rust out. They'll be fine. And, uh... So that's just what I did for the park brake cable. Just laid them side by side, put these little little clamps on there, and then cut the uh, oh, the extra bolt that was sticking out off. Just you know, buzzed them off. So that's what I did there. And I got everything a little bit of lithium on everything down here that I've worked on so far. So got to pull this uh, master out of here. And then make sure all my brake pedal stuff is lubed up real well. I was looking for a grease zerk. I know a lot of these old trucks had grease zerks on these, but I'm not seeing one, so I may end up having to pull the uh, E-ring off of here and get that pedal off of there and clean everything up and lube it. Um, if it doesn't go freely, it's kind of a pain to put back because you got a great big spring wrapped around back here. Um, on the back side of this and those are quite the chore to get put back well, I guess in. we'll uh, compare these guys here and uh, if I look at them it's the one I took out obviously down inside here where the plunger is on both it's pretty much identical depth and all that good stuff so uh, yeah that's a direct uh, swap right there um, what we have on the old guy here is, uh, you know, you got your rear and your front and your front all coming out of the same general area. On the uh, dual I'm putting in here, what we have is we have the rear back here um, and then a front and a front and then uh, we have two different uh, sending units for the brake lights which is no big deal so basically uh, I'm gonna have to um, I don't know if we look at them again kind of relatively in the same position here uh, front front and uh, they're gonna go to the front up here so I just got to bring them back a little bit, a couple inches, no big deal. The rear, however, is going to have to extend further, and uh, I kind of think it's long enough the way it is. There's a uh, couple of S-curves in it that don't necessarily need to be there, being as it had been uh, patched once upon a time here. Um, there's a patch in it right here which I'm going to go ahead and reuse this, but back in behind they got a couple of S-curves in here just that are flopping in the breeze. I can straighten them out and get my little bit of extra length I need. And I think this is all going to work out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it in here. Um, well, actually, i got to figure out my reservoir, and then I'll mount it in here. I have a couple ideas on the reservoir, but we'll see. 
Well, I've got an idea here. Um, you know, it's got two uh, fill places here. And um, Greg Porter has a, a reservoir that just sits right on top of his uh, master. He has that in his gear. So, you know, digging through the piles and stuff. Anyway, I came up with this. This is a rabbit. It's out of a rabbit truck. And um, lo and behold, uh, the way it's shaped down here, you can see that this is fairly close here. Anyway, if I uh, see what we got, just happens, I wonder why, that uh, it looks like it'll fit right down in there. So, what I'm going to do is find an old dual master, pull one of these guys out, and see what it looks like. And if it looks like this, um, I'm going to try and get these out of here without wrecking the rubber grommet, and pop this little guy back on top. And if uh, we kind of look at it in its relative position, and uh, this one here, next to it, um, I think that I'll still be able to fill it up from uh, inside the car. So that's uh, kind of what I'm looking at doing, and it'll still be Volkswagen. All right, here's what we got. We got uh, this little guy, and we got these little guys. The only difference is that the little flange on the end is slightly larger on these. Uh, gonna work fine, so I'm gonna clean this old ugly thing out and use it. And maybe I just found a modification to put these duels in uh, simpler than the way I used to do it. So, very cool. Well, it's quite a while later actually. Uh, cleaned out the uh, inside of that guy. And uh, it turns out the rear brake line I can't reach, so I'm gonna have to put one of these in. Um, hook the brake line to one side and put in a short brake line to the other side, mount it somewhere and then uh, plug this end. I don't have any plugs that fit this thread except for a plug out of a, uh, oh it's a, the top of the oil filter cover on a rabbit has a, like a, a hole for a sending unit but some of them didn't use that application and I've got a plug for one of those so that'll work great anyway so I gotta mount this underneath there through this hole and then uh, put in a couple brake lines for the rear, the front ones will fit fine and put it all together well I went ahead and uh, installed that thing up in here that uh, splitter deal if we can see it uh, where is it? it's right here there we go. And there was already a hole in this plate. Um, so I just used the hole that was already there. And then bent my tube until uh, everything fit here with no tension on it. And then went ahead and bolted it right in. So it uh, goes right through the original hole here. And I'm going to put a grommet around there just in case. So anyway, it's mounted. Now I'll take a. I got my plug in one side. I'll go ahead and take a short line off and bring it around to the other side of this uh, master where I have to. And I'll give it a look-see when uh, I guess I get it all installed. So that's where I'm headed. Well, it's uh, been decided I should probably take a look at the spaghetti mess here. What I got. Anyway, I got my uh, dual master in here. And then uh, rear brake line hooked up to that uh, deal up there and uh, route it down and around and then a snake in it so I can get over the top of this other side. You can see here nothing is touching so I don't have any vibration issue and then I'll uh, put my uh, grommet down here where we pass through if I can see that. Right here where this line passes through. I've put a rubber grommet in there and anywhere else that looks like I might have an issue. But I think this is going to work out and uh, all I have left are my two uh, brake light switches here. I'm going to use uh, one of them that was in the other single master cylinder and then I took one out of an old uh, 61 Beetle floor pan that I got leaning up against the wall. And whenever I put that car back together it will uh, get new brakes anyway. So 
and I have a couple on order so I'll have some on the shelf if need be but uh, next I gotta pull the wheels off and uh, grease or repack whatever I gotta do there check those cylinders uh, wheel cylinders and there's two on each side on this they're two half cylinders um, they're not cheap so I'm hoping they're not leaking although I do have I think two brand new sets enough to do four front, front uh, wheels on buses well, I got this uh, driver's side apart and the little uh, speedo cable sticking out there I think the speedo cable is no good which is probably where my click is I hooked it to a drill and if I go slowly the needle jumps uh, in the truck and uh, it's probably my clicky noise the uh, bearings looking good the races look fine so uh, probably just repack and uh, throw this thing back together and then uh, spin it before I put the speedo cable hook it up and just see if the click went away but I don't see any uh, wheel cylinder leak or anything so I'm gonna give these a shot and hopefully I have brakes well I'm apart here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace these front shocks um, just cuz they're old school and I've got a pair of the uh, KYB gas adjusts that are in good shape other than they're ugly so I'm gonna go ahead and put those on here and I may do my tie rod ends while I got this thing uh, apart this far I got new tie rod ends for this side, so I may do that. I got a bad one right there, so I may do that while it's all up in the air and apart. Well, I'm about to wrap it up here. It's time to go in and eat and uh, stuff. So I'm about done for today. Um, pulled the tie rod off. I do have new ends for that one. That's the driver's side. I'm going to go ahead and do the passenger side as well, but I'll have to order those, so that's another day. But. Uh, Jason had always complained about this truck when he was turning left sometimes. He'd get to a point and it would kind of hang up and you'd have to work hard to turn it. And I can feel that back and forth here. And what it is, down in here on the uh, lower uh, link pin, there's like a grease cap here. And it's popped out and is uh, kind of binding in between the spindle housing um, and the uh, you know this grease cap it's just jamming in there so I'll have to get that put back in place and then I clean up these zerks and grease the king pins they feel alright and the link pins this one here the grease cap is gone I may try and find one off to look around on some stuff I have but uh, you know you got the zerks on the front here right there and down below those are for the king pin and then the uh, link pins are greased there's one I haven't cleaned it up yet but the link pins get uh, greased by another zerk that's on the back side here the top one however uh, is supposed to be right on top right there where that uh, little round place is and it's missing so I'm going to dig the dirt out of that um, and and uh, see what's the deal whether it's broke off in there or what and uh, get something in there hopefully it's just unthreaded anyway I'll, these uh, link pins are needle bearings top and bottom on the truck so anyways, there's dirt and all kinds of crap down in there now. Um, I may just go ahead and pop that thing loose and pull it out of there and clean it up and see what I got while I got, got this far into it. I really don't want to, but uh, anyway, it's probably where I'm at, so we'll see. Anyway, then i got to dig up a, a Zerk to put in here. The other side, they're all intact, so that's a better, better deal. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, 5th of um, September out here. Still working on this thing. So, uh, yeah, tie rod ends do this uh, shock absorber. I'm going to take one end of the uh, stabilizer here loose and just feel how it feels. If it's any good, I'll leave it in there. If it's crap, then uh, it comes out as well. 
But uh, yeah. Anyway, time to eat. So uh, thanks for watching.